G'day, I'm Trent from Aussie Hobby Homestead. Today I'm going to show you how to build a wicking bed just out of like plastic containers that you have around the house or you can buy from any hardware store that you might have in your area. So today what you're going to, going to need is some sort of container to build your wicking bed in. Mind you, it does not have to be a big plastic container like this. I'm using this tough tub because they tend to last a bit longer. You can use anything from a bucket that you can place some material down the bottom and do the same process that we're going to do here to something a bit bigger into like a whole IBC for instance. So today what we're going to need is some sort of piping. So it can be any sort of piping you have laying around the house. I just happen to have lots of this. I've drilled some holes in the bottom. So this will go in the corner of this and the inside will be filled up with some sort of debris. So I'm filling this up with some old broken tiles, brick pieces, stuff I picked up from the local tip I was able to get for nothing. So at the moment all I'm paying for this is for the plastic tub. You might have these laying around the house, be no worries. So you might also need some geofabric. So this, this stuff will go on top of this debris after it's filled it's going to be insulation layer between the soil and the water so this is an important part to have this does not break down and allows that water to absorb through if you don't have any geofabric or don't have any access to buying any it's okay you don't need that you can use old cotton shirts anything you have laying around with holes in it it's all right you can use that you can lay them in on top of the debris like you would the geofabric but those cotton shirts will break down over time, just to let you know. So I'm just going to let you know while I'm filling this up, some of the benefits to having a wicking bed. You might live in a hot area that you're constantly out watering the garden, watering the pots, everything like that, the plants in the ground, everything, because the evaporation that's happening is absorbing all that water that you're putting into it. So you might only get about 40 to 50% of that water actually where it's needed. So wicking beds, allow you to pull water down the bottom and that evaporation allows the plant roots to absorb that through that water and into where it's needed to go. As you can see I filled this in with all that debris, the tiles, the bricks I placed the pipe in the corner so one thing you're going to need to do once you do this you establish a level that the debris has come up to or any sort of material that you have used in there and then you have to drill a hole about half inch hole in the side here so that's going to be the overflow point so if the water gets too too high or when you're watering through this once a week or even less maybe when you are watering through this pipe the water will come through that overflow point and that's when you stop watering it so that's when you know it's full so what I'll do is I'll get to that and I'll start placing this on So once the debris is in, there you go. So once the debris is in, you've drilled the overflow hole. Place your geo fabric or your cotton shirt, so anything that you are using for this layer. Place that over the top like so, around the hole here. And then we're going to fill that up with any sort of soil you have at home, either compost soil, garden soil. But it's best to use some high quality soil. Or something that you have that allows the plants to get that really good nutrient boost to, to begin with. So what I'm using today is some really high quality potting mix mixed with some mushroom compost. So that's just going to allow that potting mix not to get so compacted while it's in there. Because you will find once the plants are in there it will start to compact. So the best thing to do with that is put organic matter in, hence the mushroom compost. So I'll just get to that and show you then. So what I'm doing here is I'm just leveling it out so it's flat on top of the geofabric. So anything I put on top of here doesn't seep down the side of the crack. So nice thick layer of potting mix. 
and then a nice thick layer of that compost, mushroom compost. So what this is doing is adding that organic matter into the soil and it's really full of some nice microbes and that to get that biology going for the plants. thing is once all that soil is in there or the potting mix or whatever you fill this up with once you've planted what you need to plant you need to have some sugar cane mulch or some sort of mulch that you do use garden clippings um, wood chips anything like that that you do mulch the top of these mind you if you use fresh wood chips if they're not composted already they do have the tendency to leach the nitrogen from the soil and around the plants and that allows the plants to really starve of that nitrogen so you, if possible if you can use something like good brown materials such as sugar cane mulch is what I'm using today once you've filled this up you can plant straight into it so today I'm going to be planting some heirloom Russian kale which allows those roots, they have a really good tendency to allow those roots to come seep up that water and these will last throughout my whole winter here in the subtropical Queensland of Australia. I'm also going to plant around that is heirloom beetroot. Because this is an in-ground root crop, you can plant these around crops that are exterior of the soil. Um, although a lot of people don't like the tendency of having the space between the plants and that, but in all honesty, in my experience, I, I don't mind it. If that's not your preference, that's not your preference. You can limit the space of what you have to use. So I've planted the Russian kale. As you can see, I've spaced it not exactly how it's meant to be spaced. They're probably about oh, 10 centimeters apart. But that will grow up. It will just stunt the growth. But I don't mind that because we seem to eat it fairly fast anyway. So what I'll do is I'll plant the beetroot in between this and in the spaces where I can when available. So I'm all planted up. I've planted the heirloom beetroot in amongst the Russian kale. So this will mature much faster than the Russian kale will. Um, my hope is for both of them to go to seed eventually so I can collect the seed for next season and plant out into my bigger beds. So after you've done this what you need to do is give it a good watering. So that allows for the soil to be moist not only that it won't seep up the water in the reservoir at the bottom straight away but the moisture will keep it moist so it will allow these plant roots to establish faster so now this is all been planted out and it has to be mulched so one of the most important things about making a wicking bed is to make sure it's mulched so that keeps that moisture coming up from that bottom reservoir in the bed itself. It, does, it stops the evaporation coming out of the bed and as you can see the bed's very wet. I won't have to water this for a while. So what you'll have to do is fill the reservoir up through this pipe here and there's a hole down the side there. You can see it just here. That's the overflow hole that I had to drill in earlier. So last thing I'll do is I'll, I'll fill the bed up 
I'll give this a wash down over the top with some worm lychee I've got for my vermicomposting just to let those roots establish there we go and if you plant something like new seedlings in a wicking bed like this you might have to water them for a, say a week or so just until those roots do establish but once those roots have established they'll be able to wick that water up from that reservoir and you'll only have to water them through this pipe so that's about it thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the video and learnt anything from it please hit that subscribe button and that like button thank you thanks for watching Aussie Hobby Homestead